the U.S. markets continue to show their resiliency. Shrugging off being down almost 3% to start last week and rallying to have its best day in over a month on Friday. In this week's video, we're going to cover the key news events that moved the markets last week, as well as go over some dates that you need to pay attention to this upcoming week. The U.S. markets remained relatively unchanged last week, even after all the volatility. As the S&P 500 was up about 0.15, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ were down around 0.1, and the Russell had a nice week as the Russell 2000 was up just over a half a percent. And now the Russell 2000 is up about 21%, and the other three U.S. markets are also up over 20% for the year. Foreign and emerging markets also had a nice week last week, with foreign markets up about three quarters of a percent, while emerging markets were up over a percent. And now both foreign and emerging markets are up double digits for the year. Today we want to look at a chart of the Dow Jones. A lot of times I talk about a breakout followed by a potential backtest. And what that means is that the market breaks out above a key resistance level but then shortly after, we'll backtest that same level before it continues its move higher. And this is just normal bullish activity in the markets. And that's exactly what happened last week with the Dow Jones. At the beginning of the week last week, we saw the Dow Jones backtest down to that 27,400 level, which was the original breakout. And then towards the end of the week, especially on Friday, the Dow Jones rebounded and continued its move higher. So now we're looking at the level around 28,200 as the next resistance level for the Dow Jones. And that's less than a percent away from where we're currently at as we're shooting this video on Monday morning. So with a lot of news coming up this week into next week, we'll see if the Dow Jones can continue with this momentum and keep going higher for the rest of the year. On Friday last week, the market responded to the stellar jobs report. The economy added 266,000 jobs, beating expectations by almost 100,000, and doubling the numbers that we saw in October. Also, the unemployment rate has now dropped back down to 3.5%, back down to the 50-year lows. Also, we saw wage growth of 3.1% year over year. And these are the best job numbers that we've seen since January, when the economy added 312,000 jobs. Also, on Monday last week, President Trump tweeted out that maybe he'll just wait until after the 2020 election to finalize a trade deal with China. And in response to that, China said that they're going to look to reduce some of the tariffs on products imported from the United States, and also they're going to buy additional agricultural products from the United States. Now, this seems to be a good faith move prior to the December 15th U.S.-imposed tariff deadline that would slap China with another $156 billion worth of tariffs on their goods. Lastly, there was one additional story from last week that was pretty interesting. We saw record numbers of outflows from mutual funds and ETFs. $46 billion left the market last week. Now, this is the largest weekly outflow that we've seen since this data has been collected since 1992. And actually, it's twice as much as any other week on record. Now, this is something that we're going to be watching closely as we hope that this is just tax positioning from different institutions and it's not institutional investors actually pulling funds out of the market. As Matt mentioned in the intro, there are two important dates that we're paying attention to this week. First is Wednesday, which is a Fed meeting. And then on Sunday, December 15th, that's the last day for a U.S. and China trade deal. Thanks for watching, and if you're on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel and share our video.